Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the important infection in our country, that is malaria. Malaria is a parasite. It spreads through a mosquito bite. We will see the clinical findings, uh, other lab investigations and management of malaria. It's Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium malaria. These are the major organisms in malaria. In that most dangerous malaria is Plasmodium falciparum. It is spreading through a type of mosquito bite that is Anopheles mosquito. You can remember it as MA, Malaria Anopheles mosquito. There are other types of mosquitoes you know that it is Culex, Tiger mosquitoes, so many other mosquitoes are there. But here it is Anopheles mosquito. Incubation period is very important. Following a bite, patient can develop uh, malaria after 12 to 37 days. Up to 37 days, individuals are asymptomatic. But some patients develop symptoms very fast. So, Malaria incubation period may be around 12 to 35 days. So when we see the life cycle of malaria, we are not going to the details of this life cycle. You can see the picture here. What happens in a mosquito, uh, body of mosquito or a mosquito gut that is explained on the left side. What happens inside human body? The sphere, uh, sporozoids enter through mosquito bite to patient to patient blood then it going to the it will go to the liver there it is uh, known as merozoids then trophozoids in rbc and schizoids also can present in rbc they multiply there and they produce uh, gametocytes that will be taken back to the mosquito while biting then that will uh, form a cycle in mosquito's body and mirosoids again go back to the RBCs and again reinfect RBC and kill RBC. It will multiply inside RBC. Large number of uh, mirosoids are released from the uh, 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 enders to the RBC and large number of trophozoids and schizoids produced inside the RBCs. So, release of these mirosoids during the infective period, the, uh, the RBC will be broken and mirosoids will be released from the RBCs. During that phase, patient develops all symptoms of malaria like high degree fever, chills, rigor, sweating, all these things occurring due, during this uh, mirosoids released from the RBC. Rupture of RBC produces all complications or symptoms in malaria. <coughs> So, according to the uh, classification, we have seen different types of uh, parasites, vivax, ovale, malaria, falciparum. The clinical feature also will be slightly uh, uh, different. So, you can see, uh, I am not going to explain all clinical features. The type of fever, that is tertian type of fever, uh, cotton type of fever, uh, aperiodic, that depends on the period. Tertian means uh, uh, every third day patient is developing high degree fever, chills, rigors, all these things. Whereas in falciparum malaria, it is not depending on uh, days. So suddenly patient develops uh, uh, fever, chills, rigors and after some time patient will be normal. Again patient will develop. So depending on the days, you can uh, identify what type of fever it is. But it is immaterial. Nowadays we are taking paracetamol for every type of fever even if there is a small fever we take paracetamol so this type of uh, fever patterns have lesser uh, importance in today's clinical practice other differences you can read from this uh, uh, chart i am not going to explain in, in this chart in detail because uh, these charts will not help you in practice <coughs> now fal plasmodium falciparum otherwise known as pernicious uh, malaria the problem in Plasmodium falciparum is there are two important problems in Plasmodium falciparum. One, it affects all type of R RBCs. That is very important. Uh, some malaria like uh, Vivax only uh, 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 infect uh, 
particular uh, type of RBCs, but here it affects mainly uh, younger RBCs, uh, elderly RBCs, and uh, even at production site itself uh, they involve. So, falciparum malaria involves all age group of RBCs. So the symptoms and signs of uh, malaria uh, will be very severe and uh, the uh, symptoms are uh, extensive than uh, vivax malaria. So these are two important malaria, vivax and falciparum in our country. So comparing the symptoms of uh, uh, vivax to uh, falciparum, the symptoms are very very severe in uh, falciparum malaria. One of the reason is it affects all age group of RBCs. Second problem is these uh, infected RBCs, they adhere together. This is called as cytoadherence and they produce clumps. So these clumps of RBCs can block microcirculation. So that is second important problem in uh, falciparum malaria. So all organs will suffer because of this microadherence and uh, microthrombi in the uh, small blood vessels. So almost all organs in our body also will be uh, affected because of this ischemic uh, uh, phenomenon. Now third problem is sequestration can lead to uh, hemolysis and that uh, any cytoadherence in our body or any thrombus formation in our body that will be lysed by our own uh, mechanism, body mechanism. So a hemolysis also will be more in uh, falciparum malaria. So falciparum malaria the complications are more because of three important mechanisms. One is it affects all types of RBCs, all age group of RBCs. The large number of RBCs are involved here. Cytoadherence is the second important problem. So this cytoadherence blocks the microcirculation in our body, produces multi-organ dysfunction. Third one is sequestration is more, hemolysis is more, anemia will be more. Now the most important mechanism we already told that is cytoadherence. You can see here RBC infected RBCs form a clump and that clump or uh, thrombi will block the microcirculation. So this is the classical finding you see in plasmodium falciparum. For example, uh, you just imagine a plasmodium vivax patient and plasmodium falciparum patient. There will be microthrombi in brain in falciparum malaria that may lead to uh, encephalitis or meningitis or uh, um, you can call it as uh, 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 cerebral malaria. In that condition, small blood vessels in the brain will be blocked. Whereas in vivax, that will not occur, that will not produce any complication like falciparum malaria. It will be only fever, hemolysis, some splenomegaly, all these things. <coughs> now, uh, there is a term called as Severe falciparum malaria. We already know that falciparum malaria itself is severe, but there are some clinical conditions which can tell you that this is severe malaria. So, severity of malaria is always seen in falciparum malaria. So, when it is severe, you call it as severe malaria. That indirectly tells that multi organ dysfunction syndrome, like that brain is involved, GCS is low. Uh, severe weakness is there, that is because of the uh, reduce blood supply to the various tissues including muscles, microthrombi in the uh, uh, muscles can produce muscle pain, weakness, all these things. Multiple convulsion can be there that is due to microcirculation block into the brain and it is something like a stroke. Patient can have weakness, patient can have cranial nerve involvement, patient can have convulsions. Some patients can have acidosis that is because of uh, microvascular collapse. So there will be a leakage of blood vessels that will produce vascular collapse and this vascular collapse lead to uh, anaerobic metabolism, lactic acidosis, all these things. So acidosis is also seen in many patients who is having uh, falciparum malaria. Hypoglycemia is very very common in malaria that is multiple reasons are there. One is uh, when the patient is infected with malaria, this malarial parasite itself will utilize large amount of sugar from malarial parasite. Uh, can utilize the sugar and patient develops hypoglycemia. Other one is liver uh, damage can occur in malaria that produces reduced hepatic gluconeogenesis. So that also can produce hypoglycemia. And one important drug which was used in malaria that is quinine. Nowadays also we are using it but uh, in many countries it is quinine resistant malaria so we may not use it. 
This quinine is a secretagogue. That means it is like something like uh, uh, anti-diabetic medicines uh, that releases insulin. So that also can lead to hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia in malaria, various mechanisms are there, but hypoglycemia is very very common in malaria. Severe anemia also can occur in malaria. That various reasons are there, like somebody is having hemolysis because of this sequestration, can have hemolytic anemia. Patients uh, uh, like patients who is losing blood from the GI tract because of thrombocytopenia can again have uh, <coughs> anemia. Then splenomegaly in many patients who is having malaria, chronic malaria, spleen is enlarged. Splenomegaly itself can uh, have sequestration and uh, anemia. And short RBC lifespan that is because of the infected uh, uh, RBCs can be destroyed in the circulation very fast that also can produce uh, anemia. So there are re various reasons for anemia in malaria but the most important reason is hemolysis. Some patients can have renal impairment that is because of microcirculation block in the kidney that can produce kidney damage and uh, uh, hypovolemia that is due to volume depletion in the blood vessels or vascular leak can also produce pre-renal type of renal failure. Jaundice is very very common because these patients with uh, malaria especially uh, falciparum malaria can have liver involvement, hepatitis and can produce jaundice or hemolysis also can produce mild jaundice. <laughs> now some patients can have ARDS, this is also due to vascular leak in the pulmonary circulation and can produce vascular leak and ARDS like features. Significant bleeding can be due to thrombocytopenia. Many patients who is having malaria, whether it is falciparum malaria, malaria, malaria or uh, 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 vivax malaria, all type of malarias, you can get thrombocytopenia and bleeding tendency. Shock is very important. Shock can be due to vascular collapse, uh, the dehydration may be a reason, uh, vascular leak may be a reason or uh, other causes like severe anemia, septic shocks because uh, gram negative sepsis is very common with uh, falciparum malaria that also can lead to uh, shock whatever it is shock uh, uh, in malaria is very very common <coughs> hyperparasitemia also can uh, indicate severe malaria so the parasite uh, uh, count more than uh, 10 percent it is called as uh, hyperparasitemia Now there are so many other complications also can be produced by uh, malaria. So all these conditions we rec we need to give only uh, symptomatic therapy like uh, he is having fever, tepid sponging, paracetamol, uh, all these things can be given. Suppose the patient is having um, convulsions, you may have to give uh, uh, like uh, uh, phenobarbitol, phenytoin, uh, phosphenytoin or uh, lorazepam like that we can give. Hypoglycemia should be treated with 5% uh, dextrose infusion or if severe hypoglycemia 50% dextrose or 25% dextrose can be given. That all depends on the clinical finding. ARDS may require uh, NIV ventilation or uh, mechanical ventilation. Renal failure mostly it is due, if it is due to pre-renal failure fluid resuscitation may be enough. Mm, then coagulopathy and bleeding tendency, platelet transfusion or uh, FFP may uh, require. Algid malaria is one condition where there is uh, associated gram negative infection, especially enteric uh, fever may be associated with uh, uh, falciparum malaria. In that condition, we may have to add third generation cephalosporin to the treatment regime. <coughs> Aspiration pneumonia is very, very common in patients who is having uh, uh, malaria with loss of consciousness so that has to be treated hyperparasitemia is one condition where the circulatory parasites are very very high that time we may have to give uh, ffp and plasma exchange may be required but clinically these things are not uh, very important because uh, uh, most of this uh, malarial parasite will respond to our uh, treatment uh, or therap medical therapy so this may not be required in many patients only if the patient is uh, very sick and very bad, even after routine therapy, you may have to go for uh, exchange transfusion. Now, 
clinical features are slightly different in different types of uh, 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 infections. Uh, plasmodium vivax and ovale, prolonged fever, chills, hepatitis splenomegaly, mild hemolysis, relapse are very, very common in vivax and ovale because hypnozoids are very common in this type of malaria. Plasmodium malaria, fever, mild symptoms, glomerular nephritis, nephrotic syndrome, all these things are common in malaria, plasmodium malaria. So, slight difference in uh, clinical findings are seen in different type of malaria. Whereas in falciparum malaria, it is the maximum symptoms are seen in falciparum malaria. That is mainly due to cytoadherence, vascular leak, and it infects all type of RBCs. <coughs> now there are some terminologies we can uh, uh, we should know. That is uh, recrudescence and relapse is very very important. In that recrudescence means a repeated attack of malaria due to survival of malarial parasite in RBCs. Relapse is recurrence of disease after it has been completely cured. In malaria, uh, true relapses are caused by reactivation of dormant liver stages that is hypnozoids. Hypnozoids are very, very important in plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale because these parasites will remain as hypnozoids in the liver of the patient. After completion of the treatment, sometimes uh, after some may, maybe after uh, one month or after one year, this can come back to the blood and it can produce symptoms of malaria. So that is very important. Another terminology is recrudescence. We have already seen that recrudescence is a repeated attack of malaria after uh, the treatment because uh, this 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 is not produced by hypnozoids. They are they are due to the remaining parasites inside the RBC. So, there is a slight difference between these two conditions. Now, once you diagnose malaria clinically, malaria clinical finding will be high degree fever, chills and sweating during that high degree fever. The fever occurs in uh, uh, alternate days or once in three days, once in four days depending on the organism. And patient will have severe sweating during that recovery phase of fever. That is a classical finding in malaria and uh, in falciparum malaria, you can have convulsions, coma, altered behavior, hepatosplenomegaly, ARDS, so many other associated uh, multi-organ dysfunction syndromes also can be there in falciparum malaria. So, whatever it is, when we treat a suspe suspected case of malaria, we have to take a uh, smear for, blood smear for this patient. You have to take a, a both thick smear and thin smear. You can see here, there is a thick smear, there is a thin smear. It demonstrate, thick smear demonstrate the parasite, thin smear demonstrate the species of the malaria. So, both are important. You have to take a thick smear and thin smear, especially when the patient is having high degree fever, chills and rigors. If you take the sample, it will give more better accurate results. Now, other investigation, so uh, uh, most of the time you may not get this malaria parasite in your peripheral smear because an expert's opinion is re uh, required there. A uh, routine uh, lab in uh, lab technician may not pick up uh, 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 no inexperienced person may not pick up this parasite. An experienced technician is required, and uh, that require more time also. But uh, there are some other investigations which can be done very fast and which will give better results than the thin and thick smear. Thin and thick smear is uh, very uh, uh, the expensive. It is not an expensive test. But other investigations are expensive, but that gives better uh, yield than uh, peripheral smear. <coughs> In that most common test is QBC for MP that we will see afterwards. Other tests are like uh, histidine rich protein test, uh, plasmodium uh, lactate dehydrogenase test. These tests are also available nowadays. Uh, PCR test is also available, but the most common test will be QBC for M MP that is quantitative buffer coating test. You can see the test here. Uh, uh, the parasite will be uh, taken in a centrifuged sample of uh, blood. In that acridine orange uh, uh, will be added. So, the parasite will be ha will be having a orange color <coughs> that will be picked up by microscope here. So, quantitative buffy coating test is the most important and most common test used in our country to pick up the malaria parasite, both uh, 
both uh, species identification and uh, parasite identification can be done by this QBC MP test. Now, once you diagnose uh, malaria, uh, previously we used to uh, treat the patients with uh, uh, chloroquine and uh, quinine. Nowadays, many of uh, uh, many of uh, malarial parasites in our country, many of the areas, endemic areas, we we get uh, resistant cases. Resistant cases means these parasites parasites are resistant to chloroquine and quinine. Both are similar type of drugs. So adverse effects also same. But uh, previously we used to give chloroquine in sensitive areas, especially for vivax. 600 milligram base. That means. Uh, uh, it is only uh, <coughs> chloroquine tablet, but the uh, dose will be different in the tablets. That is chloroquine sulfate. So, 600 milligram base, that means 4 tablets should be given. 4 tablets of chloroquine sulfate should be given initially. Then 2 tablets are at uh, 6th, 24 and 48 hours. For radical cure, that means for hypnocytes, we have seen that previously hypnocytes are there in vivax and malaria. Uh, so, for them, we have to give primacin 15 milligram per day for 14 days. So, that will cover the hypnozoids also. So, chloroquine first uh, uh, few days, then after that completion of the treatment course, you go for primacin to uh, control the hypnozoids and control the relapse. Now, falciparum malaria, previously we used to give quinine. Quinine is available as injection and quinine is available as tablet. Both the doses 10 milligram per kg, 8 hourly for 5 days. So, quinine or chloro, uh, quinine injection or oral tablet can be given. Only problem with quinine is quinine is a secretagogue. That means quinine can induce insulin uh, production that can produce hypoglycemia. So, quinine should be always given in dextrose containing solution and after 4 hours continuous infusion of dextrose also should be given. Other side effects of quinine is synchronism, patient can have uh, tinnitus, vertigo, nystagmus, all these things can be there. Some patients it can produce arrhythmias also. So, nowadays we are not using quinine because many of our areas, endemic areas in our country, quinine is resistant. So, malaria parasites are resistant to quinine. So, we do not use quinine nowadays. We use artisanate. That is a Chinese herbal medicine. Uh, it is uh, extra extract of uh, some medicine called as Kinghasu derivative. So, artisanate 120 milligram stat, then 60 milligram per day for 6 days plus a sulfur drug with pyrimethamine can also be given uh, along with this artisanate. So, artisunate 120 milligram stat, then 60 milligram per day for 6 days. So, that can be given. Alternatively, you can give if RT meter is available, 80 milligram daily can be given. So, that is also uh, derivative of uh, uh, artisunate. So, artisunate, RT either all are Chinese herbal medicines, extract of these herbal medicines are used. Uh, resistance to these drugs are not well known, so we can use these drugs and uh, to prevent the resistance, we always add another drug that is uh, uh, sulfadoxin with pyrimethamine that can be added. In severe cases also, we can give artisanate that is the drug of choice. Previously, we used to give quinine IV infusion, but nowadays we Avoid that because of various side effects and resistance pattern, we are avoiding this. So, individuals more than 20 kg, 2.4 mg per kg stat IV followed by 2.4 mg per kg at 12, 24, then daily. That can, There is a dose of uh, artisanate in severe um, uh, malaria. Doxycycline or clindamycin can be added to this regime because uh, resistance are formed when you are giving single drug. Multiple drug therapy resistance are not well known, so you can use multi drug regime for uh, to prevent quinine, uh, sorry, to prevent resistant malaria. Other drugs also available piperacun, uh, 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 arterialone uh, combination is available now, but that also can be uh, given in uh, malaria. Now, once the patient develops malaria, 
if he is again going to that endemic area or suppose you are going to an endemic area and you are not having any malaria at present you can advise you can take uh, chemo prophylaxis for malaria so chloroquine sensitive areas you can take chloroquine 150 mg base two tablets weekly chloroquine resistant areas you can, when you are going mefloquine 250 mg one tablet weekly can be given or doxycycline is also available doxycycline is an antibiotic we give a doxycycline prophylaxis for uh, flood areas that is to prevent uh, leptospirosis or uh, uh, cholera the, the same drug can sometimes prevent uh, malaria also but it is always better to go for mefloquine that is better drug than uh, doxycycline so we have discussed about uh, malaria there are different types of malaria but when we think about malaria the classical finding will be fever chills sweating all these symptoms are occurring due to hemolysis the parasite will enter to the rbc and multiply there and kill the rbc and rupture it and come out that produces all this fever chills rigors and all but in malarial uh, one of the malaria that is uh, falciparum malaria the the problems are different one is it produces hemolysis and it affects all age group of rbc so the large amount of uh, uh, rbc will be destroyed the, there will be severe hemolysis second problem is rosette formation the uh, the uh, the infected rbc will aggregate to aggregate together and produce a thrombus like structure in the microcirculation and block the microcirculation that produces multi organ dysfunction syndrome third problem will be if this infected rbc or rosette will be sequestrated severely in the that means it will be destroyed in the uh, circulation that will produce severe damage to the circulatory system and it sometimes it can produce severe circulatory leak and produces uh, hypotension shock all these things there will be always associated lactic acidosis because of reduced perfusion kidney damage due to pre renal type of renal failure sometimes gram negative sepsis also can be there in many patient this is called as algid malaria some patients can have convulsion it can be due to cerebral malaria or it can be due to other causes uh, like uh, patient is having uh, thrombus formation in the brain or uh, hypoglycemia or uh, arrhythmias due to quinine there are various reasons for uh, convulsions in uh, malaria and the treatment is artesunate nowadays in our country uh, quinine resistance is well well known so we always use artesunate artesunate and always try to cover the artesunate infusion or quinine infusion with the dextrose infusion because malaria itself can produce hypoglycemia and when we are treating uh, any type of malaria uh, to prevent hypnozoids attack you have to give uh, primacin uh, primacin should be given for 15 mg for another 14 days in uh, vivax malaria three tablets statin falciparum malaria also should be given <coughs> so malaria is one important infection in our country so uh, to uh, uh, to treat the patient we need to know what are the common complication occurring in various type of malaria because uh, along with the malarial treatment we have to all, uh, also treat uh, coexisting problems like hypotension shock gram negative sepsis convulsions so all these things also should be treated simultaneously thank you